They don't mind a remake. You don't mind getting nothing. You know, I could always use some more purple in my life, right? Here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then some other people like this ain't the this ain't the color purple, ain't the color purple that I know. You know, some people looking at this and they talking about. He said, I don't, I don't remember the character of Sealy you know, shrinking down and dancing on the record player. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what is this, science fiction now? <laughs> what, what the hell is going on here? A remake of The Borrowers? Yeah, what yeah, is this? Yeah. So back in 1985, man, it was a it was a terrible time for me, and I'm, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because one of my favorite and dearest directors, man, tore the black community apart. One of your people, <laughs> Steven Spielberg. Look at him, he's laughing at the black community right now. Look, you Negroes can't have shit. Look at him. <laughs> yeah, that's a quote. <laughs> yeah, that's why you Negroes can't have nothing. I tried to come in and help y'all, <laughs> but. Yeah, he tore the black community apart when he came in and he did a film adaptation of Alice Walker's The Color Purple. The more things change. She thought like the way she turned her ass red and red. <laughs> Fuck out of here before he comes after me. Hoppo be in love with a girl called Sophia. Of course, it's a classic, but you know, a lot, a lot of people, especially if you were around in 1985, you knew how. This movie was causing all kind of trouble. So black women loved it. You know, it was telling stories about their struggles, not just black women's struggles, but struggles with women. But it, there was represent, representation there for black women, and, they, and they, they were loving the film. Black men, on the other hand, and there was a lot of protest. Uh, a lot of uh, TV shows where they had panels of, 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 of black men and women and black dudes going at each other mm -hmm. over the color purple. They were talking about, do you remember any of this? I do not. No, this was a thing. This I, was a, it I, was yeah, a, I never saw any of that. It was a huge thing. Even okay. Farrakhan came out and did a speech about it. But the thing was that black men felt like it was, a, it, it was the same images and stereotypes all over again where the rest of the world had to see black men be uh, violent, be abusive, be ignorant, you know, be irresponsible. You know, and they just thought like, you know, people get their images of up from the media and this is not helping at all. I today look at it and I see both sides of the argument and I really what was going on, if you ask me, is just that it was, it, the, the, the problem was there was just no real diversity at all going on mm -hmm. in, uh, in Hollywood for black people, period. Mm -hmm. There were no black directors. Mm -hmm. uh, Hollywood was still kind of choosing the images they want to show of us. And there were no other opportunities outside of those stories that Hollywood wanted to tell. A lot of struggle shit. You know, we, we didn't have, uh, Spike Lee wasn't even on the scene yet. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Robert Townsend was just barely on the scene and he was doing, you know, his small independent movies at the, at the time. So, yeah, man. This was something where uh, this something where this is uh, this this caused a lot of ruckus, man. And while the black community was fighting amongst themselves, all of them turned around, and looked at Steven Spielberg, and like, and why is this white Jewish man up in our business anyway? <laughs> <laughs> and for Sp Steven Spielberg, he would, even he kind of felt bad because like this was his opportunity to come in and direct a drama. Mm -hmm. You know, he was sort of a you know blockbuster and genre guy. Yeah, and he uh, invented the blockbuster. Yeah, him and George Lucas, man, and. This was the time for him to come in and be uh, uh, perceived or looked at as, uh, you know, a dramatic director now. And <clears throat> there was so many things going with this movie, man. They, you know, the Academy wanted to praise it, but at the same time, they're like, we don't want to touch this shit. So you know, <laughs> they tried to give it awards for things that were safe. He never got an award for uh, Best Director. I don't even think it won Best Picture. But... Uh, you know, at least this time with this movie, a lot of people are saying, was this, was this remake necessary? And a lot of people are saying, well, you know, this time we have a black director, uh, Blitz, I think his name is Blitz Bazawul or Bazawule. And people are like, well, you know, that's a start. That's a positive place to, to you know, to see if we can come in and do this movie over again and see if it can be better received by everybody this time, black men and black women. Did they achieve that? Some of y'all are even young enough to ask the question, what the fuck is the color purple? <laughs> you know, so, sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll tell you what the color purple is 
and we'll talk about this remake that we have right now with a whole new cast and a whole new different vision right after we watch this trailer. Dear Seely, we are more than just kings and queens. We are at the center of the universe. They don't mind a remake. You don't mind getting nothing. You know, I could always use some more purple in my life, right? Here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then some other people like this ain't the, this ain't the color purple, ain't the color purple that I know. You know, some people looking at this and they talking about. They said, I don't, I don't remember the character Celia you know, uh, shrinking down and dancing on the record player. <laughs> you know, what is this, science fiction now? <laughs> what, what the hell is going on here? A remake of The Borrowers? Yeah, what yeah, is this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tiny black people dancing on furniture. And, you know, but, and, then, uh, and then there's some people that are like me who remember when the movie came out. I enjoyed it, but I remember the controversy with it. I'm like, oh. Here we go again. Why, why, are we, why are we starting this mess again with people? You know, we just got over this. And, you know, looking at this, so, yeah, this, it's different. Now, this is not exactly a remake of The Color Purple, the movie. You know, this is uh, it's based on the book, which shares the same story. But uh, this is, the, like, taking elements from the Broadway play. Right, right. Yeah, this, okay. yeah it, the, the movie, the Spielberg movie, was an adaptation of the book. But then it did a Broadway musical that's an adaptation of the Spielberg movie. But now here's an adaptation of the musical, which was an adaptation of the movie, which was an adaptation yeah. of the book. It's very meta. You yeah, know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just looked it up. Uh, it, the musical actually came out in 2005, yep. and it closed in 2008. So yeah, it didn't and even it, have that long a run. And it had a re, but it had a, it was very popular and had a revision, I believe, in 20 or, or a revival, revival revival in 2015. Okay. So yeah, so this the, you no, you can't keep purple down. <laughs> you know, you can't can't keep this movie down for for a woman who was who who was so uh, down trying and beaten on and you know just kept kept down. You can't keep her down, <laughs> you know. No, I mean that's the whole, you know, raison d'être of the movie is, uh, you know, her her spirit not being kept down. Yeah. Even though she was downtrodden, she overcame it. Yeah. So in case you don't know about the color purple, for whatever reason, and and, and I'm gonna tell you, if you if you a black girl, you know about the color purple. Shit. That shit, we, <laughs> unless your parents yeah. didn't raise you right. Well, shit, the moment you popped out the vagina, they were waiting on the, they had a copy waiting <laughs> on your ass. They had a computer showing that shit. They was on the phone streaming. You know about the color purple one way or another. If you're a little black girl, and you know if you're a black dude, you know about it because they won't shut up about it. But thing is with the color purple, if you don't know the story, this is the story of uh, Seely, Miss Seely, who's played by Fantasia. What's Fantasia's last name? Barino. Fantasia Barino. And she got nothing in life but her sister. And even that was taken away from her when uh, she was, at, as a teenager, taken up by this uh, man seeking her sister's hand, but instead just got a consolation prize with her, uh, the character of Mister. And this is about her just having, just, just being beaten down by everything and everybody in her life. Because as the way she looks at it, you know, started with her father pretty much raping her and then... Uh, and then this guy, and she, but she starts to discover love and you know, uh, and and acceptance among other people, and discover some things about herself with, throughout this book with these uh, characters that go in and out of her life until she finally gets the courage to stand up for herself. Uh, it's you know, it's it's actually I, listen. No, no matter what you think about the the Spielberg movie, it's actually a it's actually a very well directed film, and the, it, needless to say, the story from the book of in Alice Walker's book is. Uh, is uh, is is great, you know. Great characters and uh, it's just uh, uh, great character arcs and just a lot of surprises in that book, man. Uh, and I, I will say this: let me let me let me let me say a couple of things about this movie. I'm gonna get one of the biggest negatives out the way, and that is that damn poster, man. That's one of the worst fucking posters I've ever seen. <laughs> I, if you're gonna bring this movie back, why you do this? That's, man, you know, man, you 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 do Photoshop. You look at the way he just threw this together right here, man. <laughs> now I want y'all to look at this. Look at this poster right here compared to the posters they did back in the day. <laughs> yeah, you, do you see what I'm saying? Look, <laughs> yeah. look, look at the artistry here, man. And uh -huh. look at this. They, they just look like newscasters. <laughs> <laughs> It, yeah, it just looks like a musical review that it's at a local theater. Yeah, what was that movie that because Tar Taraji P Henson in this movie? What's that movie where hidden numbers, hidden figures? Hidden figures. That looks yeah. like the sequel to Hidden Figures right yeah. here. This poster's terrible, man. That's some. You know, if you're gonna bring the movie back, don't be disrespectful of the movie, but put sl slapping some shit together like this. <laughs> it's terrible, man. Taraji P Henson looks really funny on that poster. It looks like the Grinch. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm hey, still Christmas. None of them people in the same room at all. <laughs> oh, no. this, that's not even in a movie. It's, it's horrible. Horrible, man. Um, it's trash. It's garbage, that poster right there. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. Uh, but on to the movie. Now, y'all know about how I feel about representation these days, man. Y'all know how I feel about struggle movies. Y'all know how I feel about images uh, of the way black people are portrayed. I think, you know, we are a lot more than what Hollywood wants us to be because we are still, we, Hollywood still cashes in on us because of our stereotypes instead of who we really are. You know, that's just changing. Don't get me wrong. Uh, so I'm still uneasy about Hollywood's obsession with black people in certain time periods where we still putting S's at the ends of everything. And they do that a lot here in this movie, man. Uh, I still think we need to show more of us outside of what Hollywood wants to show of us. But I will also say this, as somebody who's brought up the history, you know, the very contentious history of this, the way it just split the black community apart back in the day, um, it does try to fix a lot of things that, make that, that, that were making it so divisive back in the day. You know, and uh, looking at this, I, I appreciate the effort that they put into it. Um, first, there is a reason for the remake. You know, again, like I said, this this is um, this is more based on the the the, the musical than it is the movie. Uh, and considering that Hollywood just loves to remake anything, this already sells, sets itself apart by being a musical. Uh, and as we told you, know, the musical came out in 2005, had a revival in 2015. And, you know, looking at this being a musical, it already kind of, it kind of lightens and alleviates some of the harshness that we, that, that, that we had from the, uh, from the, from the, from the uh, original. I'm not saying that that's not important. That's, that's a big part of the book. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying, man, I'm tired of seeing that struggle <clears throat> shit, you know. But, and I don't mind it. We have to put in and show, you know, a more glamorous side of us by showing us, you know, musical numbers that show more than us, you know, they, cause there's, there's with these musical numbers, first of all, it, they're, I think they're very entertaining. I know people have been mixed on some of the, the musical numbers mm -hmm. here. Some people say they're going too long and they're going long enough. Uh, I don't like the musical numbers in there. I want my old color purple back. Uh, but you know, the choreography in this man, the, 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 the production on the musical numbers, uh, you know, like I showed you the dancing on the big gramophone and, you know, then, then sets like this, uh, not only does this make it feel like it's its own thing, but it gives more of a feeling of a thriving black community because in the first one, everything was shacks and dirts. <laughs> and then, then I'm talking like the people back then, dirts and shacks and ships. Uh, but, you know, it's like it's, things look like a shanty town back then. Everything was made out of wood and whatnot. You know, in this, in, in this version here, uh, there's more feeling like, okay, you know, for all its flaws, there's a more sense of community, thriving community. Uh, and putting these musical numbers in just kind of, add a certain dignity and glamour to that notion, too. Uh, I like the cast of performers here, too, but I'll go ahead and get into that in a little bit. What, do, what are you thinking about this so far? Uh, well, <clears throat> you know, I know you're more sensitive to a lot of those things you, you bring up. Uh, I think it'd be weird to have something set in that time period and not make it accurate. Just well, not, to, let me just say this. I'm not saying I have a problem with the accuracy of the time period. I just get tired of that time period shit, per, well, per, well, first of all. Well, yeah. I mean, I get tired of seeing that all the time, too. But this being the classic that it is, uh, it, I, it doesn't bother me here. Because it's like, okay, we this has been established. This guy grandfathered in. And it'd be weird to any time to try to, quote, unquote, fix that. Uh, as far as the musical numbers, like the, the idea of making a remake of The Color Purple would be, okay, why do you feel the need to do this? However, making it a, a movie that's based on the musical, you just even making the musical itself, that puts it in a different realm. It, make, it makes it a, you know, a quasi new thing. So doing that already sets it apart to, so it's not such a, let me compare apples to apples here. Uh, and one thing I can say is that the music in this is phenomenal. We just loved, Pretty much all the songs, uh, a lot of choreography, but just the the singing and just a, 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 every every uh, you know all the music in it. I thought was incredible. I was like, wow, this is a this is one of those movies where I see, I go, I want to own the soundtrack because they because yeah. everything was fantastic and the voices, especially um, most impressed with uh, Taraji P Henson and Daniel Brooks. Daniel Brooks' Sophia, I was really quite blown away by her. 
Yeah, you know, the, the, that's the thing with this. So I'm not, listen, I'm not saying that, and I think I said, I, you, you're saying the same thing I am, like mm -hmm. the music sets this, is mm -hmm. what sets this apart. Mm -hmm. like, like, Hollywood makes shit where they, you know, they would do it beat by beat. And you've seen the same thing before, mm -hmm. and we're just kind of like, what was the use in doing that? So I said, you know, if there's a reason for doing a remake, they'd have a Broadway musical. And like I said, I think that just, again, alleviates this from the black struggle feel of stuff. Because, like I said, there's a real glamour to the musical numbers here. And I agree, I think the musical numbers are great. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I think that these uh, performances in here are so great. You know, uh, uh, Daniel Brooks plays the, uh, the Oprah Winfrey character. I forgot what that is. Sophia. Uh, so, Sophia. And she, just by the nature of her character, she kind of dominates, man, and just she ups, upstages uh, 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 the character of Celia. Celia. Uh, uh, Celia, I'm sorry. Uh, what's in the Fantasia? Mm -hmm. She upstages Fantasia, man. And that's not because Fantasia's bad in the movie, but because no. that, that, just her character is so... She's just that good. Because cause, cause, cause Oprah kind of did that when she played uh, Sophia in the original movie. Uh, so with every one of these, it's like, man, I don't know how you're going to... Yeah. What you're going to pay. It's just like, oh, shit. She just pretty much steals this movie. Well, they, she gets all the... The character is bigger. The character's more confident. Uh, she gets the bigger number. So if you watch the original movie, you know there's a part in, in the movie where Sophia tells somebody, "Hell no," and they had they made a whole musical number out of that. So she has one of the best musical numbers in here, man. Uh, somebody else who's really great is uh, Taraji P Henson, and uh, she's Suge Avery. You know she's the one that kind of, she's uh, uh, she's a performer. I think there's a side thing going on with her and Mister. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, oh and, yeah, clearly. Yeah. Uh, and again, she's another character that is very confident, you know, larger than life. So a lot of people are gonna sit up here and talk about Fantasia in here, man. And they and I've heard some people say, like, ah, oh, well, Fantasia, she's not as good as everybody else. And it's like, well, that's because, you know, Celia is a character that's kind of, you know, uh, quiet. You know, she's she's not very outspoken because, you know, she's she's kind of scared to speak up for herself. She, she's scared of getting the shit slapped out of her if she says says anything. You know, she's been beaten into submission by life. So I don't. In, so Fantasia is actually really good in the movie, man. She's actually great. I just heard some people criticize her. I'm like, you know, I don't, I don't think that that's right. You know, she's, you know, you, you can't judge her by her character because when she gets in those musical numbers, and also as her character starts to grow, they actually have her story arc take a further uh, uh, step than it did in the mm -hmm. last in the mm -hmm. last movie. Mm -hmm. So they actually go in and make her character uh, a lot more uh, of a different person. That's all I'll say by the time we get to the end of the of the, of the film. Uh, I don't think Fantasia's bad, but I wasn't feeling her as in the same way. Like her singing, of course, you know, yeah. she's an American Idol winner, yeah, yeah top, you know, uh, stratosphere. Uh, acting wise, it wasn't like she was bad. At the same time, I was like, I can tell that you are not a professional actor. Yeah, you know what? I, no, yeah, I, like I said, that, that character makes me want to like give her, give her more uh, of the benefit of the doubt here, but also. It's, and this is a big thing with the movie. There's just some things in this movie that just not going to top what happened in the original. Yes. You know? And that, I mean, look, that damn, them two fingers that <laughs> Whoopi Goldberg put up when she put that hex on Mr. Uh, Fantasia tries to do that too, and you ain't going to top that with Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> Knock you up on. She about to put that iron claw on his yeah, ass, you know. She, <laughs> she put that, that chicken foot on him. <laughs> he like, oh, like, look, he looking at the fingers too. It's like uh, Chris Pratt with those yeah. Velociraptors. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I thought he was about to run into it and get the three students. Yeah, yeah. Boop. <laughs> yeah, you ain't people. You ain't gonna top that heck shit. That that that, that was a career defining moment for mm. Whoopi Goldberg, and Whoopi Goldberg ain't ever top that. Yeah. So you, that, that's one of the times where they actually did just kind of repeat in a way, almost beat for beat what they had in that first movie. And uh, I, I don't know how you would have got around it, but you're just not going to be able to do that uh, you that you do right by me uh, uh, line that she did right here. Everything you've done to me, already done to you. <laughs> he can't even look at her now. He's looking at his hands. <laughs> some fingers, boy. <laughs> and one of them crooked ears. <laughs> if she did this, he's, he'd lay on the right, right, right. <laughs> now roll over. Yeah, it's like she has him in stasis. It's like, ah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I thought she was gonna pick his ass up and throw him across the field. <laughs> I may even be ugly, but dear God, I'm here. You know, that's a like one of the most iconic moments in the movie. 
And uh, man, you're just going to be taught that. <laughs> I'm mm-hmm. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I will say, man, well, you're not going to be able to top those things in the uh, in the original movie. The actors do hold their own in this, and because a lot of it is because of the musical numbers. I mean, you have people who are really great at acting, like Coleman Domingo. Mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Coleman Domingo and uh, and Danielle Brooks, if they get an Oscar nomination for best actor or best supporting actress because they're that good. But in addition to acting, they got to do the musical numbers yeah. too. And so they get to shine, all of them get to shine in ways that they, you know, the original actors did not. Yeah. And so, you know, that's, and that's and again, this is one of the things that I appreciate about this. Uh, also, with this movie right here, what they can do is, since, it's, since we are now in a more modern age, we can actually go in and explore certain uh certain themes that we were not able to explore before that deep uh, you know there's lesbian themes mm-hmm. that were in the original yeah and we touched on it a little bit but this one takes that shit a little you know yeah, yeah. a little fun now, they don't turn it on damn porn or nothing you know, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, well, you know. it, it, it was almost like they, they got close and went like um <clears throat> For this time period, they could not have uh, no. pulled back on that. And that was another thing that was controversial. Now, that was the thing that bothered black women. I know. You know, black women are like, now nah, we got to go to each other to get support. We can't even depend on these trifling ass Negroes. Man. <laughs> <laughs> we got to be lesbians now, you know, <laughs> which did not help black men, you know, who are already pissed off about this. But yeah, they take this a little further, man. You know, uh, they able to explore this theme a little bit more. Like I said, ain't, you know, ain't playing scissors and shit here, but you know, they, but they, uh, but they do. And I, and I think that's, that's a great thing that they, mm-hmm. they're able to like, because that's, a, for, I never read the book. But I heard that that was a you know was a big part of the book. Mm-hmm. Uh, Seely with Shug Avery exploring you know their, their their you know their their lesbian relationship. Um, you know I what I what I think. Uh, what well, go ahead, man. I got something I want to say, but I see you probably. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, what, yeah. I'm gonna say this. What I think are are improvements in this movie. The improvements that I'm talking about. That are improvements on things that were so divisive back in 1985. Is I think that they do things in this movie where I think they're improvements, but they might anger some other people what they do here. I don't know. I have to wait and see. Because I think that the biggest themes of this movie that we have here are that are played up more than the one in, in 1985. The themes of redemption and forgiveness are a big thing here, man. And some people might not think everybody in this movie deserves to be forgiven or they deserve redemption. And I'm even kind of on the fence about it, but I do, because I, 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 I mean, some people kind of, man, I'm like, man, I don't know if you deserve to get uh, get no, off the hook on this. But I mean, at the same time, I understand why, and I'm not going to spoil anything. I will just say this: unlike the first movie, which was so divisive, the aim of this movie was to express unity at the end, and forgiveness, and you know, and being able to like trying to bring people together to for whatever it takes to bring the black community and black families together. You know, and I think that that does fix some of the problems of the first movie, especially regarding the depiction of black males. You know, uh, I'll take that. And well, I have, you know, I'm on the fence of some of these characters and where they deserve their, you know, their redemption arc, uh, which I'm, I'm, I mostly do. I'm like 90 percent, you know, on that. But I'll take that over the divisiveness any day because I thought the end of the movie had it was a little long. God damn, he wouldn't stop saying that at the end. I was, like, I was like, come on, y'all are done. But I do like that the end where they, you know, it was all about coming together, putting all the bullshit aside, and really trying to get together for the better whole instead of, uh, you know, dividing ourselves. And I thought that was a beautiful way to end the movie that they did, the way they did here. Uh, and I'm pa- before I pass this on to Martin, I will say one more thing. One of the things that they do here that they didn't do uh, in the original they wanted to, but they weren't. I don't know why they weren't able to do it. Uh, they filmed some parts of Africa. Now that's a good and bad thing to me because I'm glad that they went there. But then again, Africa looks like they're on the damn pond in Georgia somewhere. <laughs> so, you know, say yeah. that, that, that ain't Africa. I was like, that's Hawaii. I don't think that's <laughs> yeah. Africa. Man, you being too kind. I ain't Hawaii. Yeah. Hell, that's, oh, you're right. You're right. Man, that's a field <laughs> in Alabama somewhere. Yeah. Or something. Man, it's a goo lagoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, I was like, that ain't Africa, yo. Yeah, because uh, something I did like in the in the in 1985 movie was when they showed Africa, but it was, mm-hmm. you know, they didn't go into depth with it because we were just writing letters and you got images yeah. and you let your mind fill it in. And here, when they show it, kind of cheesy it, it and, is. And, and and they they stay with it longer which was more of a how long is this movie and 
you we don't have to we don't have to be all here for all this and uh, this doesn't look as great as everything else we've been seeing up to this point yeah um yeah i you know what i i feel like like i missed all the controversy with the original that you were talking about uh but i i can see this having just as much on different fronts different levels i i it's i love the like i said love the music in this love that it's a musical i'm gonna say something that is gonna be controversial I wish it was more of a musical. And when it's the, when it's when it's really being a musical, I'm loving it. And when it's being the drama, which about sixty percent of it is, mm -hmm. I couldn't help but compare it to the '85 one. Mm -hmm. And and it kept coming up short on that end. And I, I know everybody's going to come from a different place on this. There's going to be people who are biggest fans of the book, big, biggest fans of the original movie, people who've seen the musical and 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 love that. Uh, so, as much as I don't like making the comparison, you gonna you can't help but compare it to one of these things. Yeah. And like I said, when it came <clears throat> to the drama, uh, it was like, okay, now I'm watching somebody reenact what I've seen before. And the original Color Purple, the mo the movie anyway, I just found it so emotional. I was I was in tears at, at the you know throughout, but especially at the end. And and I'm talking about the end where something happy happens. Uh, and here watching it, it was like, yeah, it's those same beats, but just not hitting me as much. Uh, Coleman Domingo is is great in the in the role of Mister. Uh, just, but he's charming. He's charming in a level where uh, Danny Glover was threatening. And and part of it, I know, is because I hadn't seen Danny Glover before, uh, where Coleman Domingo's in so much now. Yeah, and you just saw him be charming in, in Rustin. Um, so as as good as he is, it wasn't the same. And and it's going to be across the board. It's like, well, it's not the same. Well, it's not the same. And, and it can't be. So it's it's kind of unfair. And yet there's no other way to go with it. I still found it very entertaining, uh, just a little long. And emotionally, it didn't hit me nearly as close. And while it it may be a good thing to take the negative and the the cruelty out of it, I thought that was a lot of what made the 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 story, you know, hit so deep. And they kind of, you know, smooth those edges off. What would you give it? Uh, I would give it a really high matinee. So I have complaints in different parts. Uh, I, like, uh, well, not completely different. Like, I, like, like you said, maybe, maybe in different areas, but I really did think they were going on too long. And that, like I said, at the end where I, where I was loving the ending, I was like, all right, y'all need to sit down and <laughs> sit down and eat. Everybody yeah. shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to tie to y'all singing. Can we man. have dinner already? Yeah, like, come on. <laughs> food up here getting cold. Y'all still up here singing about shit. Come on, I get it. Everybody's all right. We're good. <laughs> but um, I think some parts of this, I don't have a problem. I'm not because I, I don't. I was not. I didn't find myself comparing it as much as you did. Mm -hmm. uh, and I did like the dramatic parts. Like I said, I think they took the dramatic parts and expanded them a little bit, which I appreciated. Now there's some parts that are way too over dramatic. Mm -hmm. I mean, we got one part where a dude you know, or somebody's crying in the rain and there's thunder and lightning and oh, 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 please! And I was just like, get, get your ass off! All this hollering. <laughs> it's like, come on, man. I mean, now this is a little too much right here. Yeah. Uh, it was very over dramatic, man. It's, it's things like that. I go, if seeing this on the stage would totally work. Yeah, yeah. It's in the movies, not as much. Yeah, yeah. There were small parts, only small parts like that, though. But I, I like you found this very entertaining uh again i don't like these images right here today i'm getting tired of it as as i always say but uh, again there's a reason for this to come in not only because it's a musical but i did see where they can make it some improvements and while it doesn't not no hell no as good as the first one no i mean i'm sorry i'm sorry <laughs> regardless of what anybody thought about the first one that Spielberg can fucking direct. <laughs> you know? oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, man. I don't like a Jewish man telling us what to do either. But, but, but damn, I mean, he, he knew what he was doing. Mm -hmm. Man knows how to use a camera. Yeah. And the, the, the director, it's not a slight against him. Uh, you know, he's, he, he has to direct something that was already, you know, done by somebody else who, I'm sorry, you know, was, a, was able to do something better with the drama there. But uh, still, though, I think this director did, a, did an excellent job with what he had here, uh, especially with the musical parts, mm -hmm. I think he balanced it well with the dr with with the drama, and I, I and like you, I found it very entertaining, uh, and that's mostly thanks to the music that we had here too, 
And I felt, I, let, me, you know, let me just say this, it helped that I just walked out the movie feeling really good. You know, I wasn't crying like I was in the first one, mm -hmm. but I had a different sense of joy with this, and I really appreciated what they did with that. So yeah, man, this is a, this is this this is a, a low full price for me. Somebody who who is needs to be getting more attention right now, who who is doing a lot of work and, and is showing a lot of range. Corey Hawkins, man. Oh yeah, uh, he plays Harpo mm -hmm. in this, and and that's the thing with this movie. They are expanding the roles of black males and exploring black male relationships. Uh, you know, he's, he plays uh, Mr. Son, Harpo, and they explore more of their relationship more than they did in the first movie. So <clears throat> I will say, looking at the first movie, yeah, the black, the black male characters were a little more flat than they are in this movie, so I do think that they fleshed these characters out a little better here. Uh, that's one of the biggest improvements that I think that they had done. So yeah, it's a low full price for me, man. And uh, you know, some of these actors here, I hope that this is successful enough to where they start getting more attention, especially somebody like Corey Hawkins and Daniel Brooks, man, because they're amazing. Yeah, I forgot that Daniel Brooks was in Peacemaker. Oh yeah, yeah. And Taraji P Henson, I I was so sure that she, they were dubbing her voice, but that was her. Singer. No, that's her. And they actually explore more of her relationship with her father, mm -hmm. where they did not do that in the other movie. So there, I do think there are. You know, good gives and takes with this, uh, you know, this remake right here. Uh, while not being better than than the first one, they did do a lot of big improvements over some characters here. And uh, yeah, uh, you know, only thing I would say the the worst person in this in, in this whole movie is that goddamn the poster maker, <laughs> the poster artist, the poster artist. Get get rid of his ass, her ass, whatever. That and maybe that uh, that soundtrack or how they're oh. they're advertising that. Man, now this is another. See, this is what I'm talking about. Thank you, Julian. <laughs> Julian, he came up to me today. I mentioned it yesterday. Oh, yesterday. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 you did. Let me see if I can find this. I, I emailed it. Man, I'm, see, this is what I'm talking about. Did you, uh, did you do K Cool Man? Did you email that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it should be like at the end of the trailer that I sent. It should be labeled color purple. All there it shit. is. Now, see, this is what I'm talking about. You know, Hollywood trying to cash in on shit that had, don't even have anything to do with this movie. Uh huh. So what 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 were they doing? So him? yeah, they're like music inspired by the color purple, and it's fucked up because it's a musical. But they got Megan the Stallion and all these other rappers coming in, and you can hear yeah, <laughs> show Martz. Yeah, yeah. Let's see here. just show. Yeah, preach. <laughs> that ain't in the movie. Okay, maybe that thing I said about the soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, that's why when you said that, I was like, oh, buddy. They're oh. just trying to cash in. Oh, my God. Ain't no big, you Negroes <laughs> yeah. ain't got no clash. I don't want this this, uh, this Broadway musical stuff. You got you want your hippity hop. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, shit, y'all ain't gonna buy this if y'all ain't rapping and showing ass. So. Yeah, when well, you said there was a song called Hell No, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh. Yeah, no, that ain't, that, no. That, that's I, not the song that's in it. It's I, good. I, I'm saying Hell No. The hell is this, man? Hell, hell get the remix. Hell, hell, hell no. Hell, hell, hell no. You went out that disrespecting head to the door. Nothing, nothing against the song. But God damn, they just trying to cash in. I know. And if you but, let it but, keep going. But that means that song's on the soundtrack. Yep. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, it's on there. Among others. Because that's the only way, that's the only way you black folk gonna buy this shit. <laughs> Wow, okay, never mind. Forget, forget what I said. <laughs> what rating did I give you? Yeah. yeah. Damn. Well, it's what, an what, impressive yeah. looking movie, though. I looked it up. It's only $15 million, which is yeah, really? yeah. the budget, yeah. No, that is impressive. There's been a lot of projects that they've done lately, anywhere from The Color Purple to Godzilla Minus One, where they uh, are even uh, the creator. Mm -hmm. Where they show that these budgets that Hollywood puts in these movies, man, ain't they, they, it's unnecessary sometimes. Yeah. Say what you will about the creator. Story-wise, a lot to be desired. But that movie looks like what we're used to seeing as $200 million mm -hmm. movies. Yeah. Not even $100 million. It was yeah, 88 80. million. Yeah, Godzilla minus one was not even, what'd you say, not even 15 million? Less than $15 million. And this is 15 million right here. Yeah, th 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 all these overinflated budgets, man. Insane, insane. I don't know where that money's going. Shit, they, a lot of cocaine being bought. <laughs> I'm telling you, K cocaine's not gonna buy itself, yeah. my friend. Yeah, went, <laughs> and went to went to this motherfucker to make this. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a fifty million dollar post right there. I can't get over Somebody that. Somebody threw that together in Canva, and, <laughs> and like we just need something. All right, here you go. 
<laughs> I'll, I'll work on the on the real one over over the weekend. And here you go. Here's the finished product. Oh, we know we're good. We, we already got what. <laughs> Shit, I was already in the marketing. <laughs> that hair looks they, crazy. They, they walk in the work and see it, those posters everywhere hanging up. Like, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> yeah, what are you doing? No. <laughs> nah, yeah, it's too late now. Man, this shit is everywhere. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell no, man. Yeah. Uh, man, thank you for bringing that to our attention, man. God, oh, God damn. All right. Sorry to. <laughs> <laughs>